Welcome back to here at Goldberg. Today we're going to be talking about the computer science major. Is it worth your time, money, and efforts? Uh, this video, just to be clear, is directed towards those who have relatively limited knowledge of computer science and the IT industry. So if you're one of those smug types that comes down from the mount to proclaim that uh, being a natural born genius is the key to all this, it's stylistically designed to be that way and you cannot diminish the effects of it. And it's going to be great. It's going to be great. I respect you, but you have to recognize there are a lot of folks trying to find answers and just putting them down isn't particularly productive. So I really want to help people along the appropriate path. Now, of course, for those folks, you can't treat IT or computer science as a terminal degree. You get the diploma, you always have to be learning. And if you're not comfortable with that, you just want a basic job, uh, this is probably not the type of work you want to get into because technology is always changing. Let's just start out and look at some BLS statistics to get a general overview. It's not a perfect agency, but it certainly helps us frame the questions that we're trying to answer. So computer programmers, you see a 9% decline, which might seem kind of surprising. Part of that's offshoring, but you also have the dynamic where Job titles have changed, so in the past you might have even called a software developer a computer programmer, depending on the circle that you're in. Uh, it doesn't mean that you can't get a job, it's just that, as I just said, things are changing, technologies are shifting. The demand is not always in the same area. Then we see computer hardware engineers, slower growth. These are the people dealing with the physical chips, and not all colleges actually have this in their department. If you're a smaller school, it might just be computer science, like a programming degree. A lot of people in my school would double major, do software engineering and also hardware engineering, which is, there's a lot of overlap, so not a terrible idea, to be perfectly honest with you. Then we're going to have the information security analysts. We talked about this already with uh, cybersecurity. A lot of growth in that department. Uh, Fifteen years ago, was there as much of a demand for cybersecurity? Not quite. So you see, things change. And finally, we have software developers who are some of the highest paid, very much sought after, but of course, it's not the uh, field for everyone because you need a certain skill set and you always have to be fine tuning it. So you see a lot of demand for that, 22% growth. And this is just a little chart of what the salaries are in various states, even in a relatively low cost state such as Texas you're making good money. And this is pretty low, by the way, from what I've seen. I mean, software developers can easily be making 200, 300, depending on what they know and what they can do. Uh, as far as looking for where to get a degree, you don't have to go to the top one. I would recommend at least a decent research university, could be public, just because you wanna have access to more than just some basic programming courses. Um, so obviously here you've got like MIT, Carnegie Mellon, Stanford, and as you go down, Georgia Tech, University of Washington, some of these are more uh, general state schools that you will come across. The main part, as I said, not just treating it as terminal, but also don't go in there with nothing. Don't say, okay, there's this invisible wall around college I can only learn in the classroom. No, you got the internet, you've got books, you've got, you know, You've got those little like tutorial things. There's a lot of stuff you can do and you need to because having an effective portfolio is going to be very beneficial to get better jobs and prove that you have a skill beyond what you were made to do as an assignment in class. Uh, if you have no real background in programming, this is a good course. I know it's somewhat out of the frame, but you can find this on Coursera. It's programming for everybody, taught by Charles Severance, University of Michigan. This is a very good, like, you know, step-by-step -step programming course. And there's many others. You can find them on YouTube. You can find them on Udacity. Um, you obviously have Code Academy. That's another good source. Some people ask, like I did the review on Thinkful. I would not recommend doing a coding boot camp because there's so much free stuff online. If you're planning to go to college for computer science or IT, don't spend extra money on a coding boot camp because it's unnecessary. And you got stuff, this is on Udacity, developing Android apps. You know, building a portfolio is important because 
it shows you didn't just, okay, do some classes, but you're able and you're actually curious to discover new things and to troubleshoot. So if you can develop an app, especially if you makes it very popular and you can sell it to people, or if it's free, but it's very popular, you know, that's a great thing to say, look, I was able to do this. I'm not just taking assignments in class, but I'm actually making my own assignments because I have a vision and they're going to definitely appreciate that. Uh, again, kind of cut off by the frame. I don't know why they throw everything to the one side, but uh, this is from Coursera. Machine learning, that's another big aspect uh, that is kind of blowing up in IT. So I put these out there, again, because they're free courses or low cost. I think it's like 50 bucks if you want the certificate. And you can pick up on knowledge to where you're not going to be learning everything in the classroom, but you're actually going to be well in advance. And you're going to potentially have skills to where I've seen student groups like around machine learning, AI, robotics, that's stuff you want to get involved with. Um, if there is, you know, there are competitions, that sort of thing. Don't limit yourself to just being in class because that's not going to set you apart from other people. Another big part that's uh, with IT that's growing is Linux. And you've got various certifications there. Some people say Linux Plus. I don't recommend Linux Plus. If you want a certification, look at the Red Hat program. A little bit more difficult, but definitely they are uh, more respected in the industry. Uh, you're going to find, of course, that typically the government pushes certs more in the private sector, especially if you're doing development. What you're able to do matters a great deal. Uh, you see over here, you've got AWS, which is really popular, and you've got you know solutions, architect, you've got cloud. The cloud is also a really big part of IT that's growing, uh, sysadmin, and then you got developer. But of course, there is a perception from some circles that people were getting the certifications, but they weren't as good at actually doing the development of the programming itself. So that's again goes back to it. If you can show an employer a portfolio, this is the stuff you've accomplished outside of the classroom, it's workable, it's professional. If you have gotten exposure to various languages and being competent with them, because you know you don't just have Python, you've got uh, C, you've got uh, Java, many others. I know there's like frameworks such as Ruby on Rails. So don't just limit yourself. As, as I said, again, it's not just the degree. It's not just the assignments in class. It's how much can you learn and prove that you're going to be useful because new problems come along, new technologies emerge. You can't just be relying on what you did for that four-year program. You need to be always adding and reinforcing uh, the stronghold of your mind, I suppose. And um, I mean stronghold is like stronghold of knowledge, not like uh, walls against knowledge, so to speak. So overall, I think computer science can be useful. Now, some of you are going to be good enough that you can pick up programming and become a freelancer and you don't need a degree. But if you're not necessarily a, a, a natural and you still need to go to school for it, that's okay. But just recognize, like I was saying, it's a lot bigger than the degree itself if you want to be very successful. So any other topics you want to see covered here, just drop them below.